after lunch, we went through uh, my examination in chief in the afternoon and the possible areas of cross-examination by the councils for the National Assembly and by the senators themselves. And uh, my team took off for the Senate and uh, I went through my office to to pick my notes <clears throat> and uh, when I was going to the office is when uh, suddenly I developed very very intense pain in the chest and uh, I sat down and uh, the pain continued and uh, it was very intense and very sharp and uh, I did uh, call uh, my doctor uh, uh, Dr. Vikonyo uh, of this hospital who has been my doctor for the last 20 years and uh, I described him in brief uh, what, how I was feeling he asked me about the intensity of the pain and I told him it was very 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 intense and uh, as we were speaking I started uh, having a uh, shortness of breath and uh, Dr. Gekonyo instructed me to drop everything I was doing and get here to Karen as quickly as possible. He told me what I had described is not a good thing and I should come here. And uh, I went down through the lift to my car and instructed my people to very speedily bring me here and uh, by the time I was getting here I was under a lot of pain and shortness of breath and I found Dr. Gekonyo and his team of paramedics were waiting for me and uh, quickly examined me and he quickly made a decision that uh, I must be admitted immediately uh, for observation and the possible treatment and in fact uh, after I was uh, after I stabilized he did tell me that uh, had I been late for another 20 minutes uh, we would be told a different story today uh, he didn't want to thank Dr. Gekonyo and his team of doctors and paramedics of the nurses they have really taken very good care of me and um he would have wanted me to stay a bit longer for further observation. But I've requested that uh, he allows me to go home. And uh, he thinks I'm quite stable uh, to go home where uh, he can look after me for and from home. In any case, uh, my home is not far away from here. And uh, if there is uh, any problem, I should be able to get back here. But as we speak, um, I'm okay, uh, a little bit weak, uh, but uh, I feel better. Uh, the pain, the intense pain has gone away. What is there is very little pain. It is manageable for a man. A man must be able to study some of these small things. But uh, in his assessment, I'm out of danger. But when I came in, it was, uh, it was very, very, very severe. And uh, I want to thank the people of Kenya uh, for their prayers. And uh, I'm sorry, many came to see me. I was not able to see them. The doctor could not allow them because I needed a lot of rest. And uh, I was under very uh, serious observation by a team of doctors and uh, nurses. And therefore, I was not able to receive visitors. And I want to thank those who took their time to come. And, uh, and, and, and visit me. Uh, Thousands, millions of Kenyans who have been praying for me for my quick recovery. I really want to thank them and to say that I will remain forever indebted to them uh, for their concern, for their love, and uh, for wishing me quick recovery. Mm. Uh, the unfortunate turn of events there uh, during that particular time um, even as you were receiving uh, treatment uh, a lot was going on uh, 
in terms of uh, Senate proceedings, the outcome of that. There's also a very active, you know, uh, legal proceedings on the same, resuming on Tuesday. In the wake of all this, uh, even as the doctor has recommended that, you know, you, you have a sufficient rest, you know, at home. But um, maybe just tell us, will we be seeing you active? Will you respond to all these issues that are going? We're talking about a parliamentary outcome. We're also talking about a legal process, which is so intense that has even involved a three-judge bench. Uh, what will be your reaction towards all this? I think for now, my life comes first. My health comes first. It's unfortunate that when I was here in hospital, my brother and friend, President William Ruto, ordered for the withdrawal of my security from the hospital here. I've been here alone without a single officer looking after me. He ordered the withdrawal of security guards in my rural home in Nyeri, in my private home here in Karen. And all officers who are close to me were disarmed and given warning that they should not be anywhere near me. I didn't know President William Ruto can be that vicious. I'm shocked by how vicious a man I helped to be president, a man that I believed in, a man that I was persecuted when supporting him, could so be so vicious against me when I'm literally fighting for my life in hospital. How cruel can a man be? You know, as we speak today, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, regarding Ashagwa, has no single security officer around him. She's alone. And um, I am aware that a judge seated in Kirogoya, another one seated in Midimani, gave conservatory orders staying the proceedings of the Senate, which effectively means I'm deputy president. When the president in total violation of the court orders viciously with due security around me, again, to cripple the functions of my office, he ordered through the head of public service, Felix Koske, that all officers in my office be sent on compulsory leave. Just last night, all vehicles assigned to officers who work under me were impounded to cripple the office of the deputy president. I don't understand this level of viciousness to a man who have been your deputy who helped you to become president, irrespective of whatever he has done. At his lowest moment in life, when he's literally struggling to stay alive, you unleash such viciousness against him. I bear no grudge against anybody. But uh, this had, had not seen that in President William Ruto. The man I'm seeing is the one is not the one that I thought that I knew. I know there was concerted effort that I should not go to Kuala for the celebration. Wilson Airport were told that I should not go through Wilson Airport. All owners of helicopters were told that I should not be allowed to use any of them to go to Kuala. I don't understand. But as I say, I want the people of Kenya to know that as I go home today, I have no security. And uh, it's good that they know. And if anything happens to me, or my family, President William Ruto, must be held to account. We've made many mistakes in life. And we keep on learning. I trusted President William Bruton. 
the people of the region where I come from, the Mount Kenya region, trusted him. In fact, as we were preparing to go to office, nobody else trusted him. Msalia Mudavadi demanded that the Masa in an MOU with him, which they did. Moses Wetangula demanded that they, they must sign an MOU with him, which they did. Um, uh, Amazon King he demanded the same. Alfred Mutua, everybody else. I'm the only man who trusted him. Verbally, because we are Christians, we used to go to church together. And as a Christian, I believed a fellow Christian that he would never betray me or my people. For the last one year, it's been very difficult for me. But I'm a very persevering man, very enduring. And um, what happened on Thursday is a culmination of continuous persecution and stress for a year. And when I look at it, probably it is history repeating itself. But President William Ruto wanted to take me the route President Daniel Ramoy took Kenneth Matiba. He pushed Matiba up to getting a stroke and eventually dying. When I look to what the President is doing to me, especially now when I'm in hospital, crippling me, treating me like an animal, I think he wanted to take me the Matiba route. But God is gracious. It didn't happen that way. I hear many of his people are calling here asking whether I'm dead, whether I'll survive, whether I'll recover. They were celebrating. It's the most unfortunate thing that has ever happened in this country. That you can be so vicious to a man who helped you to be president. And the crime of this man, telling you the truth, don't evict people without compensation, Mr. President. Mr. President, don't overtax people. You are killing them, you are killing their businesses. Don't force a housing program on people. If people do not want these houses, don't force them. My only problem with the President is just being truthful because nobody else can tell him. The framers of the 2010 Constitution wanted a deputy president who is elected as a bava who can stand for the people. The charity we are being treated for, too, is get rid of an elected deputy president and appoint a control freak. A fellow you appoint who cannot ask a question, who cannot say anything. And I'm sure if they succeed, he'll be asked to sign an undated resignation letter so that in case he starts asking questions, he can just be told to resign. But the framers of the 2010 Constitution were very clear in their mind why they wanted a deputy president who is elected. I'm the only man in the cabinet and in the whole government who can stand up to President William Ruto and tell him, hey brother, this is not right. This a done thing is not good for the country. There's too much corruption, Mr. President. This how things thing is being forced down on the people of Kenya. And they don't like it. Please don't force it down on them. You know, situations where medical equipment that was being supplied by Kenyans to the Ministry of Health now has been given to one single Asian. I said, Mr. President, this is not right. We are killing our business people. So, as we speak, I say that uh, my lawyers are in court. We have faith in our judiciary. And I requested that according to the rules of natural justice, I be accorded an opportunity to be heard in the Senate. You remember I presented myself to the National Assembly and defended myself. In the Senate, I was there day one. And even when the Speaker asked me to sit down to listen to the charges, I decided to stand up to face my accusers. I was there the following day. I was ready for cross-examination. The 11 counts is nothing but malice and fiction. It was a political game by the President to get rid of me. And looking at it, I don't think the president had any intention of ever working with me. 
I think he just needed me to help him win the election because of my mobilization capacity and the faith in the Mount Kenya region has in me. So I should have been given an opportunity. I have asked my lawyers and they have told me the motion was not time bound. What, what is time bound is a select committee that should work for 10 days and then report to plenary. That committee was never constituted. So this matter should have continued and waited for me. I was ready for cross-examination so that I answer those 11 counts one by one. And I'm sure had I been given that opportunity, I would have persuaded the senators otherwise. I was not given that opportunity. When you look at the speed at which Renati Kashagwa is being held at office, it's like the story of Simon Makonde. You remember that story? Yeah. One who died, who was born on Monday and by Sunday was buried. The kind of efficiency that has been exhibited in holding the Gadi Gashagwa out of office, if this efficiency was being exhibited in the management of the affairs of this country, Kenyans would be very happy. What is the hurry? The framers of the constitution gave the president 14 days to look for somebody to replace the deputy president. It gave parliament another 60 days. That's a total of 74 days. Why is a job that was prescribed by the framers of the constitution to be done in within 74 days is being done in half a day? You must ask yourself that question. I think it's being hurried to circumvent justice to avoid the courts of law from interrogating this matter and making a decision. The courts told us they don't want to interfere with the process to let the parliamentary process get finished and then go to them. We have gone to them now. It's over. The courts will interrogate the process and make a, and make a determination. But I ask that the president obey court orders. Through a court order regarding Kashagwa is deputy president. Why doesn't he have cars? Why doesn't he have security? Why has his office been uh, made dysfunctional? I think it's very important. But I, finally, I want to tell the people of Kenya that I don't feel safe. And for the first time, let me say that uh, on 30th of August in Kisumu, undercover security agents entered my room in Kisumu and bagged it. And one of them tried to poison my food. But we detected it and we were able to escape the, the scheme. I was supposed to be killed through poisoning. On 3rd of September in Nyeri, another team from the National Intelligence Service came to Nyeri and tried to poison food that was meant for me and Kikuyu Council of Elders. I did report this matter to the National Intelligence Service and the officers who were assigned to my office, I asked them to leave because I felt I was not safe. After the two attempts to assassinate me through food poisoning failed, it is when this impeachment motion was hatched. When my security was withdrawn here, officers from the National Intelligence Service have been hovering in every room, in every compound here to an extent that I had to call my wife and my children to come and stay in my room, in my room just in case they get entry to my room or compromise the people who are treating me. So, regarding Ashagwa and his family feel very exposed because these people have tried to kill us before. They have now tried to get us out of office. So, I asked President William Ruto, my brother, I helped you to be president. Leave me alone. Leave my children alone. Do whatever you want, but let me live. Let me look after my children. You can do whatever you want with the country, but allow me to live. Because I was there for you when you needed somebody to be there for you. When you were in trouble and you needed a man who could stand with you, I stood with you, with my family. You have paid us in kind by being so cruel and vicious against us. We are simple people. 
We are a very small family. Let us be. Do whatever you want. But please, Mr. President, I beg you, don't kill us. Don't kill my children. You have caused me enough pain for the last one year. Please, leave me alone. Let me be. God will take care of me. I don't have to have security. I don't have to have drivers. I don't have to have cars. Please allow me to have my peace, if nothing else. And remember, I was there for you when you needed a man to be there for you. Let the courts of law uphold and protect our constitution. I ask the Chief Justice, Martha Kome, to live true to the fidelity of our constitution, to make sure that this is a country of the rule of law, to allow the court process to take place and ensure that this process is not negatory. There are orders asking that Ricardo Gashagwa remain in office until this matter is had and determined. Let it be. Thank you very much. Um, just a quick one, please. I don't want to say that. Thank you.